Hello, neuroscientists. Today, I'm going to talk to you about action potentials, which is just another name for how a signal travels down a neuron from one end to the other. But it's unbelievably complicated and really incredible if you consider that it can happen at a rate of up to 100 miles per hour. So once you look inside the neuron at what's happening, it just blows my mind that it can happen that quickly. I'm going to be teaching you about action potentials using this origami organelles nerve impulse model. You don't need your own model to understand what I'm going to tell you, but if you want one, you can check the links down below the video to see how to get this. I've also created a handout for you that you'll find in the description of the video down below. Yours will be blank. If you have a way to print this out, I would highly recommend that you do so, so you can take some nice detailed notes that will help you process what you're learning. The other things I would recommend having are a ruler, a black Crayola marker or something similar, you could just use a pen, a few different colors of colored pencils, and a pen to take some notes. So it might be weird to think about, but you are filled with electricity. We're all filled with electricity. We have a hundred billion neurons just in our brains alone, and they all generate electricity, and you have nerves running all through your entire body. So we are electrical beings, and that's how our cells send and receive communication. This diagram shows an example of a motor neuron, and neurons, their purpose is to send signals. They send signals from the dendrite end to the axon terminals where it can jump to another neuron. The longest part of a neuron is called the axon, and the signal has to travel down the axon, which acts like an electrical wire. And that axon has myelin sheath covering most of it, but the little gaps in the myelin sheath are known as the nodes of Ranvier, and that is where all the action happens. So everything I'm about to show you happens in each of these little nodes. Those are the only places where the membrane is exposed and ions can pass in and out. So I'm going to use this model to help you understand what happens during an action potential. And this represents the inside of the axon and that represents the outside. And here we have the membrane that keeps certain things in and certain things out. So this represents a node of Ranvier where all the action happens. Most of the time the neuron is at rest and there's no signal passing down the axon. That phase is called rest or resting potential because there's always the potential for a signal to pass down. During resting potential, the axon is like a charged battery. The inside of the cell is more negative than the outside of the cell. And that's because there are lots of positively charged molecules inside like DNA. But it's also because there are more positive ions outside the cell than inside. So there's less positive ions inside. A difference in charge is known as polarity, and it's necessary to have that polarity in order for a charge to pass down the axon. So we have to have that potential. But it takes a lot of work to keep the axon charged and to keep the potential for a signal to pass. So how does that happen? Well, it happens using these membrane proteins called sodium potassium pumps, and these are all down the axon. These pumps are running all the time, and they actually use about 75% of the cell's energy. And that's just to keep the cell ready to send a signal. It's not even sending a signal. It's 75% of the cell's energy to keep it at rest. Isn't it so weird that it takes so much work to be at rest? And what the pump does is it keeps the sodium outside of the cell and the potassium inside of the cell, and it does this by using ATP, or energy, and lots of it. So it's constantly trying to pump out any sodium that gets in. And that does happen. There's leaking of sodium and any potassium that gets out. It's trying to fix that and get all the potassium in and all the sodium out. And it always does it with the same ratio. So there are always three sodium going out for every two potassium coming in. Three sodium out two potassium in. That's the only way it can work.
During rest, the official sodium and potassium channels are closed and no ions can pass through those, but the leak channels are always letting a little bit leak. So I think of it like house cleaning. You can clean all day, but more messes are constantly being made, so the work never really ends for the sodium potassium pump. But nerves send signals, right? They're not always at rest. Right now you have neurons helping you hear and see this, and others telling your muscles to move so you can write. So that's because signals are passing down. How does that happen? What happens is that the dendrites are being stimulated. They're being stimulated through things like light or sound or thoughts in your brain. And there has to be enough stimulation known as a threshold in order for the signal to actually travel down the axon. So now we'll move to our graph. You should have filled in your resting box and your sodium potassium pump. Take your ruler and divide your graph into four sections. I keep the first and last section slightly bigger because this is what's happening most of the time. And we're gonna draw a line to show what happens during an action potential. You can use pencil first if it makes you more comfortable. The first section of this graph represents resting potential. And when the neuron is at rest, it's at negative 70 millivolts. We're always talking about the charge on the inside of the cell. So we're at negative 70 millivolts. In order for an action potential to happen, you have to reach something called a threshold. So the neuron has to have enough stimulation in order to trigger a signal to go down the axon. And that happens when you reach negative 55 millivolts. So it's slightly less polar. And at that point, all sodium breaks loose in a process we call depolarization. Now, during rest, it's important to note we have far more sodium outside and far more potassium inside. And it's also important to understand that the pump is the thing making that happen. So the sodium potassium pump is running all the time, keeping more sodium out, more potassium in. In order to remember that the sodium potassium pump keeps the neuron at rest, let's color these boxes in this section of the graph the same colors. So what's happened is in order to meet that threshold, a little bit of sodium has started to pass to the inside of the cell, making it slightly less negative. At this point, the threshold is met and suddenly all sodium breaks loose and the sodium channel is gonna fully open up and we are going to see sodium start to pour into the cell. So let's see that happen. So all that sodium has dumped into the cell. It's rushed in, it, think of it like all the sodium ions were like little kids at the top of a water slide and suddenly they get permission to go down the water slide, they all pour into the cell and it's actually a passive process. It takes no energy for this to happen. It's a one-way door too, so the sodium is only coming into the cell and then at that point, sodium is positive. So if we have loads of positives pouring into the cell, What's gonna to happen to the charge inside the cell? It goes from being very negative to being neutral and then to actually becoming positive. So now we'll go back to the graph. You should now have depolarization and the sodium channel boxes filled in. And let's see what happens at the graph. We were at rest and when we got to threshold, suddenly that triggered depolarization. And we went from negative 70 millivolts at negative 55 millivolts, the sodium channels opened. We fully depolarized as the sodium rushed in. And now we're actually at about plus 30 millivolts. So the cell is briefly positive on the inside. What we want to note here is that the sodium channels opened and sodium poured into the cell. 
making it positive. So the inside of the cell is positive. This happens incredibly, incredibly quickly. And to remember that these things go together, depolarization, the sodium channel opening, and this part of the graph, let's color them all the same color. But this does not end with depolarization. That happens very quickly, and then when we reach the positive 30 millivolts on the inside, it triggers the sodium channel to close back up. And now that gated potassium channel is going to open up because now we need to switch the charge back to negative again. So to do that, we have to let all these positive all these positive potassium ions that the sodium potassium pump has worked so hard to put on the inside, we need to let those go back out to the outside. So let's see how that happens. And again, this takes no energy. Think of it like all the little potassiums were at the top of a water slide. They were ready to go. They finally got the chance and they slid down the water slide. They went outside because there were far less outside. And now we are polarized again because we've sent a bunch of positives out, leaving the inside more negative. In fact, it hyperpolarizes for a period of time, going from negative 70 to negative 80 on the inside. So we're even more polar here. Again, the potassium channel is a one-way door. It only lets the potassium flow out, and it's only open during this phase called repolarization. So let's go back to our graph. Okay, again, you should have filled in repolarization and potassium channel. And this part of the graph is the repolarization portion. So you can see we're going from plus 30 millivolts. That's when it's triggered for the potassium channels to open up. And so let's note that the potassium channels opened and potassium pours out. When the potassium channel pours out, it makes the inside more negative again, and so we have repolarized the neuron. You can also label this dip right here, hyperpolarization. So we actually briefly dip down to about negative 80 millivolts. And that's very quick, it's a little blip. We go extra polar, and then it's gonna come back to where it was before. Let's color in these sections of the graph the same color to indicate that they go together, the, this part of the graph and these boxes of notes. So everything's reset now, but keep in mind that everything is also flipped to the opposite of what we want. We have all the sodium inside and all the potassium outside, and we can't have a signal go again until we reset that. So that's where your sodium potassium pump is going to come into play again. The potassium channel is going to close, and the sodium potassium pump is going to work really hard to get all this sodium back out and the potassium back in so that we're truly ready for another action potential. So let's see that happen. Finally, back to our graph, we are returning to resting. And again, it's exactly like before, but now the sodium potassium pump had to bring it all back. So the sodium potassium pump had to get all that sodium back out, all the potassium back in, and now we're back to rest where the whole thing can happen all over again. Let's color this in the same color as the other resting box. So here are my final notes. This is a very complicated process. Everything I just modeled was just happening in a single node. And keep in mind, it has to jump from node to node to node in order to travel down the whole axon. 
I find it really helpful to have students actually model this out. So if possible, model it using either the origami organelles, nerve impulse membrane, or you can just draw a membrane and use two different things like white beans and black beans to represent your ions, but actually acting it out will help reinforce it. You can also check out the resources below this video, some other links. If you have any questions at all, please drop them in the comments below the video. And if this video helped you, I would love to know. So please um, put that in the comments as well. Thanks for watching and have a great day.